Accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, all here. Oh, I love that wall, Nancy. That is. Yeah, I'm 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 messing with your head again because I am now in in yet another room. <laughs> I think that's four for you. As long as there's no padding on the walls, we're okay. It, no, it, you wood. notice this one's all wood. This is where I come and pound my head against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that padding's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this little room is all windows. It's like a, a summer, winter sun porch. Is this where you look at your little hummingbird pet? Oh, no, he, he's right off my deck. Okay. I, I was probably maybe 20 feet from him when I snapped that picture the other day. Wow. Do you have a name for him yet? Yes, his name is King Hummer. <laughs> he, is the most, he is the most territorial little SOB I have ever seen. I love it. You'll have to, have to keep us posted of the uh, escapades of King Hummer. He will sit on top of that shepherd's crook, or he will sit in the top of the little maple tree at the corner of the deck, very way, way lit tippy top. And if anybody else for a hummingbird, sometimes even like the bigger wild canaries, head towards that feeder, he will zoom in and he goes chee -chee 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 -chee, and he's like this little like little army dive bomber. <laughs> All right, guys, look in the chat. <laughs> no, Seth, you should not go there. I don't know why I broadcast anyway. I already did mentally before you posted that. Why do you think, why do you think my head hit my desk? <laughs> oh, that was your head? Get your minds out of the gutter, you guys. I can't. Impossible. <laughs> That's what makes this so fun. <laughs> After my one-hour session last night turned into two hours, it was, it's, I'm gone. Really? You know, what happened during that one-hour session that turned into two hours? Uh, share with us. The awesome WordPress wizard made it so I could have all of my sites in one back end. Yes, I said that. Hey, can I make a comment? Please do. Okay. It's not... It's personal. Okay. Um, I'm not gay. I didn't say you were. <laughs> but your lover is. <laughs> and even if you were, Bruce, that was okay. We would love you just the same. Um, anyway. That's right. Okay, There's so nothing wrong with being extremely happy. I have, exactly. I have updates on my son. I just want to let you all know oh, cool. that he's doing well. Yeah. We were given our go-ahead that he can start putting pressure on his feet. And in two weeks, he can start um, physical therapy. Awesome. So awesome. we're getting there. And he graduated sixth grade yesterday. Yay! Wow. Yes. So Congratulations. That's, that's, that's my info. Awesome. <laughs> that's well, what I've good. been working on. <laughs> Sounds like you're heading into a great start for the weekend. Um, yeah. Uh, he, well, he's trying. We, we take little steps every day. So... As long as we, t we try, it's good. Good. And I survived. Uh, that's not mine. And I survived my five-day trip to Seattle, Washington, even all I was sick with strep throat. Oh man! Yikes. Yeah. So I really didn't. I enjoyed the only thing that I went there for was really to see my niece's graduation from Seattle University in nursing. And I did see it. However, it was a four-hour ceremony, and I think I slept most of it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and I basically spent my time being sick. Not a good thing. So. Well, hopefully you kept it to yourself. Unfortunately, my mother-in-law and I share everything, so she has, or she got strep throat as well, and Aaron got an additional respiratory infection on top of the other infection that he already has with his leg. Oh, no. So, but we're back, and he, we saw another doctor yesterday, so he's slowly recuperating it. He has respiratory infections to begin, or issues to begin with, so it always takes time. 
But other than that, cross my fingers that nobody else is going to get sick because it wasn't fun. Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't. No. But I will say that, that my health care was phenomenal. The, what we did, <laughs> what, what we had to deal with, it was great, great situation. So, and my poor Bailey missed me. Aww. <laughs> so that's enough about me. <laughs> I've had my five minutes of fame. Cool. cool. Thanks for sharing, Rhonda. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay, how about those uh, kings? <laughs> they did win, didn't they? They did. So, Bruce, do you want to tell us in more detail what you did to your website? Uh, uh, I'm not sure I would know how. Okay, does anybody here know what WordPress multi-site is? Yes. Well, I figured Andrew would. <laughs> I've, I've heard yeah. of it. I, I've, I've not ever done anything with it. I've thought about it, but... It, it it, it's not entirely what I expected, but it's awesome. It allows you to create a network of blogs, basically. So it was really designed to for people like, say, like a Chris Perillo, who have a blogging community, where in less than 30 seconds, if I want to bring a new blogger into my community, I can carve out a new site just for that blogger. It's as easy as basically going into your network admin control panel, naming the site, deciding what the URL will be. It'll be your site slash whatever you decide. <clears throat> or you can do it as a subdomain, so you can do something dot your site dot com. And, uh, and at that point, where it's also useful though, is if you want to create, rather than having to install multiple WordPress databases, you can actually um, have it all in one database and create all these sites and from one panel you can access all your sites. So Bruce is sharing it on his screen if you want to click on his thumbnail there at the bottom. I've got it highlighted for the sake of the public users. And as you can see Bruce has three different sites set up now. <coughs> this is not an, the, the options available in WordPress but it's not anywhere that you can just click on. You actually have to go in and change the code in your WP config file. It is not easy to set up. It's it's kind of a pain, but once you have it set up, it, you're, it's done. For who? For Bruce. No, I'm <laughs> yeah, I would never touch the config file. That's for experts like Andrew. Well, what we did. Uh, actually, don't look at Andrew. Andrew's the only either. <laughs> what I did, what 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 Bruce and I did yesterday, because I logged in and helped him do this was what you do is you rename the existing config file to wp-config-old or something so that if you need to you just go back to that file but Bruce is showing you the page with the network setup code once you've initially changed the wp-config file then a new option appears to create the network once you do that you get this screen and you have to change the config file once again as well as change the .ht access file so it's just copying and pasting the code. You don't have to be a coder to know how to do this. You just have to follow the instructions and copy and paste the code exactly where it tells you. I am so ignorant when it comes to copy or, or to following instructions. I can do it. And if it works, we're all good. If it doesn't work, I'm so in deep that I need help for real. <laughs> so in other words, we should just call Seth David for us. Andrew does a great job. And Andrew. Oh, I got an endorsement. Okay. That's nice. <laughs> Andrew's awesome. Andrew fixed a problem for me this week that has been oh. driving me crazy for weeks. Awesome. Oh. I was so excited I could just, yes. And Wendy, much. what was your problem? Um, I had a problem with Excel not working properly. I couldn't copy and paste. And it was driving me a little crazy. I did all the uninstall and reinstall. And, um, just all those wonderful things, put the disk back in, did a repair, did all that stuff, couldn't do it. And it took Andrew about two and a half seconds to keep <laughs> it down. And who introduced you to Andrew? Bruce. Yeah. The group. <laughs> um, hello. I know it's me. Actually. <laughs> we love you too, Seth. Yes, we love you too. <laughs> 
remember, oh, yes. Seth. remember <laughs> Seth, we had a hangout. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just you and Rhonda. Yeah. So what was wrong with the cat? Uh, would you believe too lazy to go out his own stinking kitty door? He wanted me to let him out the front door. I love that. Uh, yes, I have a cat just like that. I, I believe that. I have a husband fully. like that too. Oh, shoot. Did I say that out loud? Yeah, you did. And, and why? I record it on the court. Ah, that's okay. He knows better. He knows. I didn't hear a thing. He's in the other room. <laughs> I won't tell him. I don't care if you do. He knows it. Oh, and Bruce, I did not need to log in to QuickBooks while I was gone. At all? <laughs> At all. I was too sick. <laughs> <laughs> so how's that working for you anyway? Um, great. I don't have a problem. Um, I mean, it's just like using QuickBooks on my computer. It's just not on my computer. Um, other than that login thing that I'm dealing with, or where it wants to upgrade the R13 or something like that, it's let still them there. Upgrade it. Yeah, let them upgrade it. Yeah. Um, yeah. My own. You know, my only other issue that I wish I could do is, is um, we're using a program called Jetstream, and they do um, work with QuickBooks. I wish I could get it to work with it. Um, but I don't know where I'm at with that. Seth, Seth, what are you concentrating so hard on? I'm looking. To, somebody had posted a comment on one of the on one of my comments, and I wanted to post the uh, link to the live feed for him. And now I can't find where his comment is. So. Well, un un unclick me in your bar, please. I'm d I'm done sharing my screen. <laughs> no, I like having you up there. <laughs> <laughs> What would be great is if I could get in there and control your webcam so I could, like, zoom in on your forehead or something. Nice. <laughs> I could be working on that undercover stuff. There you go. <laughs> so I thought potentially we were going to have a guest, Nancy, but I guess uh, not. Maybe next week? Hey, are you talking about Roxanne? Yeah. Yeah, next week, the 29th. Okay, and so is that when you want to do your thing? or? Hey. I can do it today if you want. I, I don't care. I'm, so I'm fired up and ready to go. Do I need to clean my glasses? Uh, no. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. What, what's Nancy going to do? They look a little dirty. <laughs> Nancy is going to show us her product. Oh, really? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, let me shut the door so the kids don't get knocked. <laughs> Hey, I came out of the garden, and when I, I when I read Seth's post of put on a shirt, I said, "Oh, yeah, I guess maybe I better." Gary, <laughs> <laughs> which the okay. pictures you posted were beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you. Did, did did you like my early morning visitor that wanted breakfast but no coffee? Have you not eaten him yet, or her yet? Her? It, nah, it, she needs to get fatter. Well, she was kind of skinny. I'll agree. It, and it, she knew I was taking her picture through the window. If you notice, she was turned around, like looking right at me. Yeah. This was the this was the the turkey that showed up yesterday morning at like quarter to six. <laughs> Too darn early for visitors and caught in uh, breakfast. Well, you got plenty of time between now and November to fatten that turkey up for Thanksgiving. You darn right. And if she goes after my blueberries, it's going to be early cooked turkey. <laughs> <laughs> cook, cook Sunday dinner. I'll invite you all. You just have to make the trek to Vermont. I don't go east of where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me, I don't deliver either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I invite you all to the beach, but there are way too many sharks now. Yeah. Four people got bit by sharks yesterday. Where? Awesome. Myrtle Beach. Oh my God! You're kidding. No, all minor awesome. wounds. None of them. None of them serious. Oh. But the animals have the planet back. Yes, yeah, seriously. Okay, so you you want me to to demo my AIA billing product? Yeah, tell us about it. Let us see what it does. Okay. Well, as you guys here know, um, I work with contractors, which can be sorry. 
<laughs> Coming so from it can me. be interesting because uh, that's putting it nicely. Got a something that's specific to them that they need to comply with. One of the biggies is AIA billing, which a lot of people will refer to as A1A, but it's really AIA, and that stands for American Institute of Architects. And um, Architects may be really good at like designing things, but when it comes to accounting and math, boy, are they whacked. So, and it's it's a really stringent two-page or more um, set of billings, and they want it done in just a certain manner. Now, it, QuickBooks Progress Invoice will give you some of the data, so we work strictly off that as well as an estimate. And I will share my screen. Um, hang on a sec. Where the heck is QuickBooks? <laughs> Doesn't say it's down there. Hold on. There it is. OK, can you see my QuickBooks? Not yet. There it is. There it is. OK. So in QuickBooks, I created an estimate, and I actually did it with using group items. One where we're going to suppress the items in the group so that you can track more detail than what you want your customer to see. And the other where we're going to print the items in the group for something where you do want them to see that. So our first set are plans and permits that's all going to roll up to a single line item called plans and permits. The second group is going to be breakout labor and materials. So you go ahead and you create your estimate and from that you create a progress invoice. Can I ask a question? Sure. Five dollars. Okay, <laughs> bill me, Andrew. <laughs> um, what would what contractors use this? Like what types? Builders, um, remodelers, developers. Like uh, larger company because I don't do this, so I don't. Well, no, pro because you guys do mostly remodeling, correct? Yeah. Okay. Usually it's like new construction. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. Where you've got to like, you know, when you you like build a house yeah. and yeah, that's the, the okay. same kind of kind of. I deal. got it. That's why I was like, okay, am I missing something? Like I'm not doing this because. No, no, okay. you're good. Okay. So here we created an estimate for 20% of each of our line, or a progress invoice for 20% of each of our line items, and we're just going to save it. And <laughs> invoice 75. No, that was not Hobo. And now I'm going to bring up our CAPS program. Did that share? No. You must have. There it is. Yes. Okay. And from here, it's really easy. You just do file and application for payment. And you go get the progress invoice that you want to use. And it connects to QuickBooks. And it comes up and tells you you got to add it because there's missing pieces. We're not seeing that, I don't think. No, we're, we're just looking at the Welcome to the Construction Application for Payment Solution screen. Uh, okay. When you go to screen share, there's different options. Some of them are for a specific window, and, and then there's options for just showing the whole desktop or screen. See, OK, let me try desktop then. Ah! OK, now hold on. Let me get back there. Whoa, <laughs> meta. OK, are, are you good now? Do you see the, the job maintenance window? Yes, now I can see cool. it. Cool. OK, way too much, huh? So you put in your original contract date, and I'm sure this isn't quite right. Now, there's project numbers, 
and I'm just going to make this real easy. And 90% of these have an architect, so you and one of the requirements is that you need to have that architect information on the form. So this is just backing up for a minute, and I'm sorry if you covered this and my mind drifted to Alaska for a moment, or maybe Germany. But this is what I what's required of, for architects for compliance purposes. It, correct. Okay. And all this comes comes from your client info sheet that you created. Yeah. So here we go. Here's the detail of what we're going to hold in here. And let me show you what these, oops. I will preview it for you. Bruce has a turtle. <laughs> a very small turtle. Okay, can you, can you see that? No. Yes. Yes. Okay, this is, this is the front page, and this is where I say architects aren't very good with math. For one thing, AIA billing never, ever, ever is concerned about any money that you've received. And that's mainly because you don't, it, you're waiting anywhere from 90 to 120 days to get your money. And in, in that time, every month you're billing. So it's just a cumulative total of what you're billing, never taking into consideration any money that you've received. So, it, and it's really pretty simple. I mean, it starts out with they want to know how much the original contract was, what the change was by change orders, and then you add those two together, and that's your contract sum to date, how much work you've completed, what the retainage is, how much the retainage is to date, and then this one gets really cute. Total earned less retainage. Okay, so that's total completed minus your retainage. Anything that you've billed for previously. And then finally we've got our current payment due, which is your current bill minus the retainage. And then you have the balance to finish including the retainage. I cannot tell you how many people get so confused by this math. So that's that's the first page. Oh hell no. 1620 plus 180? Yep. So your so your application basically grabs the information from QuickBooks and prepares this for us. Correct. Without having to create an Excel spreadsheet or try and fudge that QuickBooks progress invoice. Because mm -hmm. I mean here, I mean, you can see a lot of this stuff, your scheduled values, your previous amount billed, and your this period, really all of this comes from QuickBooks off your progress invoice. But then, of course, there's materials that are stored, meaning, like, let's say you were doing, like, a... <laughs> like a oh, my gosh, that... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I can't see. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> You're better off. <laughs> I'm missing stuff. Yes, you we'll, are. We'll catch up later. Just don't share the chat on your screen, whatever you do. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Okay. <laughs> so, let's say you were building a patio, and you had $5,000 worth of brick that was delivered to the job site. Wendy. <laughs> Okay. I'm so That's sorry. It. Done. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. <laughs> okay. That's it. Done. <laughs> oh, now you got us in a wormhole. That oh. looks awesome, Nancy. I like your wormhole. Wow. <laughs> oh, good grief. <laughs> there, we're back to my hardwood wall. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to distract from what you were presenting. <laughs> it was just an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Oh, boy. <sighs> 
So a anyway, a, a lot of people on like the Intuit forums will tell people, oh, just go ahead and do this in Excel. But the thing is, you got to update that thing every month. Manually. Yeah. Manually. Been there, done that. It was no fun. So it's just it's, so the, the but the essential issue is that the information has to be provided in that exact format on that form. It, correct, and There's and no some of them even won't take our plain paper versions. Um, some of them actually want the forms from American Institute of Architects with its pretty little red logos all over the place. At which point you're paying a dollar and a half per sheet of paper. I hope okay. you don't get it wrong and make any mistakes. It, right. And so, does your application make it easy to print it out on that paper? Yes. Yep. Okay. They, they can buy them, do a for, um, do a form alignment, and um, feed that into their printer, and they can have a plain paper and a AIA original to satisfy somebody who really, at that point, is probably playing games and doesn't want to pay them. And is there no option to file this electronically? No. Nope. Uh, architects are very much paper oriented. Wow. I mean, is that something that you think is in the future? Or it seems like it would make obvious sense. Well, you know, it, it probably at, at some point. Because, I mean, like certified payroll reports in the last three years, electronic filing of those has become like almost a, a standard in and even here in the Northeast like Maine Department of Transportation they require everybody who does certified payrolls or works on you know the main highways to submit their certified payroll reports electronically yeah there are some here um, I have a um, the South Carolina Department of Employment Workforce all the unemployment reports yep print the form out. You have to do it electronically. You can't yep. go on the website and look at the form. You can't do anything. You have to do it electronically. And isn't that a pain to have to like print the form so you got all the data and then turn around and log in somewhere and, and enter it? Well, they won't even let you print the form. I, you can't even look at their form. And if you have to do, like I have um, a client, I need to do all of 2011, but she didn't do it didn't know she had to. I have to call an uh, unemployment um, auditor and ask for them to get me the forms because you can't even get back forms to fill out. Um, not even at a QuickBooks? Not the, not, the, uh, not the South Carolina unemployment form, the one they require. I mean, yes, I have the data to put in it, but you can't, you can't um, print forms or file electronically for past um, past due quarters, the quarterly wow. unemployment. Yeah, the big pain in the butt. Ring. Mm -hmm. Larry, you've been very quiet this morning. Are you actually there with us? <coughs> I'm present. Okay, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> So, and uh, Cheryl, Vincent, if you're out there still listening, I just sent you an invite to join. For some reason, I could have sworn I put you in the circle for this, but now you are definitely in the circle for this. So, you should be able to get in if you're trying to. I saw you commented <coughs> there. Um, and so, so, Nancy, this is only for architects, then, right? Not for... These, these are submitted to the architect, and the architect has to approve it before it goes to either the bank or the GC or the project owner. Okay, so if I'm the, if I'm the, um, if I'm the general contractor, I have to submit this to the architect who I've hired to do yep. that work on my job. Okay. Yep. Well, actually, you probably, as the GC, you're probably doing it for a project owner. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the project owner probably hired the architect. Okay, and what if I have my own architect on staff on my payroll? You're making mucho bucks. No, <laughs> I've worked with a number of contractors who do. They have their yeah. own in-house architect. And so. what happens is they'll just 
hand it to their guy and he'll sign off on it and good to go. So the, your in-house architect will take care of it. No headaches yep. for the DC. Got it. Hi, Cheryl. But I'll tell you that that quick little you know, create your progress invoice, Hi. which updates your accounts receivable, and then turn around and go retrieve that data that you now know is right, sucks it into the form, print it out, you're done. You know, we're talking minutes instead of potentially hours. Right, right. No, that's and, awesome. And, uh, I mean, we've, we've had customers who have been working on big um, government projects that have, like, lasted for five years, and they have... 10 pages worth of that continuation sheet mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. the project is just so intense and involved and imagine imagine updating that well you know, I noticed the month. change order summary looks small how many change is it it's like can I just add space if I need to for more change orders um, the change order summary is cumulative okay. so all it does is keep track of total change, of orders, change orders that upped the contract or reduced it. And and there's two um, sections down at the bottom of that. Gotcha. One for additions and one for deductions. Nancy, does it interface with Mac? Nothing interfaces with Mac. <laughs> yeah, the, no, the, API, the API is not open for QuickBooks for Mac. That's why Which it's does. a joke. <laughs> and only first. I, I, I wish it would. So yeah. does um, Apple Script. Well, I, I heard a rumor that I'm technically not supposed to share, but I'll oh. share it. It's so false. It's false? Yeah, okay, it never mind, then I won't share it. I mean, Ben asked them back in 2003 if they were ever going to do an SDK for the Mac, and them was into it. We were at a um, developer conference out in, in California, mm -hmm. and they looked at him like he'd been... Smoking something really wonderful. Well, even then, though, you had probably a lot less people who use QuickBooks for Mac compared with now. So, Correct. But and then maybe we're not talking about the same rumor then, Bruce, because the rumor that I heard was something along the lines that they may be phasing QuickBooks for Mac really into the online edition. That ultimately that's where they want everyone to go anyway. So they're going to start with Mac users and say, if you're using QuickBooks for Mac, just use online, and that's where you're going to get your solution. Well, that totally makes more sense. Well, in the long run, it does because with with, with cloud-based software, it doesn't matter what operating system you're on; it just matters what browser okay. you use. Except that you don't want QuickBooks online if you're using inventory. As well, now, right? But the, the whole idea is that as time goes on, they're going to be developing that. But when I was the Cal CPA conference last week, they were telling me that they do updates now every six weeks. They roll out another update to QuickBooks Online. And it might be subtle things that you don't even notice, but the point is that they're constantly working to make it more and more robust and, and, and more and more um, accommodating to every type of business model out there. So I think it's just a matter of time. They have a long way to go. Oh, yeah, they do. But, you know, who are we to say for sure? how long really is a long way to go in terms of time. You know, it may be a lot of work, but we have no idea really what they have in development and how far out they are from really, I mean, let's face it, the ultimate goal, at least from my perspective, would be to have all the functionality that you have in enterprise solutions, you know, in the online edition. I so, agree. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's a long way to go, but if you think about it, if they start adding in inventory functionality like assembly items, um, then right there and then you solve a lot of people's issues. But then, then there's the thing of integrated apps. They have to open that IPP platform for developers to have access to that data. And but they have, because the well, yeah, but it, it's believe it or not, it's still more limited than what the SDK for the desktop is. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But I was, Bruce, when we did the interview with Max from Pro on Go, I was blown away with what they're rolling out, you know, in the near future with QuickBooks Online. Right. I mean, the ability to hover your mouse over your expense and see an image of the receipt pop up is the kind of stuff he said that they have already in beta working. They're just testing it. Wasn't that Bill.com, though? 
Now, Build.com is something else. But Build.com okay. also has integrations with QuickBooks Online. I think from what Doug said when I interviewed him. They, they do. They offer it to me. I don't even know how to use it. The Build.com? I don't even wow. know if I need. I don't know if I need to. How about that? <laughs> how big is <coughs> it? Nancy I, have, Nancy, I have a question on the change orders. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does it keep each and every change order so that if you need to go back and pull it out individually, that you can? It, it depends on how they want it built. Okay, okay. They is the whoever you're submitting it to. Some people want the, any change orders to have their own AIA billings separate uh, from the original contract. And when you do that in QuickBooks, you just m put your, your change orders as sub-jobs. Okay? Sometimes they want just the change order listed um, in, as separate line items. At which point you go back to that QuickBooks estimate, you use just a, I, I just have people create like a, a placeholder item called change order. And then you pull it on to the, the estimate, you give it the change order number and the date that it was accepted. And then you below that, you can pull in the line items that were affected, whether it was plus or minus. So you can have on your continuation sheet a detailed breakout of what was in change order number one versus change order number five, but on that front sheet, Printer. it just shows you those cumulative totals. Oh, okay. it, it, it all depends. I mean, like I said, every every it, the, the billing form is a standard. The way that you fill it out, there's no such thing. Uh, okay. Well, and you know, it, it it usually with usually with change orders, there's always the issue of some of them they're always in contention. You know what I mean? So. Well, the the thing is, you know, you, you you never put a change order on the billing until it's been signed and approved, and 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 obviously you, you never start working on it until it's signed and approved. Some of the contractors are. Uh, as you know, are trying to move ahead with these mobile applications, and the difficult thing there is to go back and and really get, you know, you don't really have someone's signature on it, you know. There, there's actually a, a change order form. Um, but there's hold on a second. Let me. Let you me, can take. Let me screen share again. Okay, I'll stay out of the chat this time. Well, you better because you know I hate missing something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll copy and paste the transcript into Evernote for well, you. Well, no, but you, you know I I miss um I, you I miss, I the miss all the facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can watch the video replay and read the chat. No, uh, okay. Like here is. Can you see this? No, I'm still seeing you. Okay, hold on. I told it to share my desktop. Can you can you see this now? Yes. Now yes. It's okay, now. okay. Let me make it a little bigger. This is a change order document, and don't worry too much about all of these doc variables. That's where it's pulling information from, either QuickBooks or the CAP program. Mm -hmm. But there is, you know, I mean, there's a spot down at the bottom where it's either accepted or not accepted, and you have actual signatures. Right. And, and really, contractors who aren't doing some sort of a change order document where they, they, they do get somebody's signature on it, yeah, they're... Just Asking they have no re they have no recourse. Yeah, it is very hard in the state of California that if you don't start getting your change order signed, um, they they are starting to crack down on that. Yeah. Well, and it's kind of stupid not to because let's face it, at the end of the day, if they try and dispute the change order, what proof do you have that they signed off on it without a signature? Our <laughs> biggest problem is 
just getting the change orders done quick enough to get the client to sign them before we've actually already needed to start the work or do the work or whatever. And it's, so it's, that's, that's been really hard for us to do. We're trying to solve it, but it's not easy. It, it, it's tough. I mean, basically what you have to, to, to not only tell whoever you're working for, but whoever is working for you, it, it, you, you don't start working on that change order until we have a signature. Right, and that, that tends to upset the homeowner. It? Well, in my case, it'd be a homeowner. Yeah. Um, the subcontractor that could be involved, you know, now you're just slowing the job down, possibly. I mean, so that's why we try to expedite them, but it's... Um, it has been a, an extreme challenge of ours, I know that. For, we're trying to work on getting something for Brad's uh, iPad that clients can sign it and, um, you know, that it would add to our system and things like that. You can get an electronic signature on the job site. They and yeah. there are apps for that. The biggest problem is, is having the document to be created so it can be um, signed electronically. Um, well, typically, how does you think, though, in terms of setting up a system around this, how does a change order come in? I would assume they either call you or they tell you on the job site, right, we want this done. And you, you know, and a lot of times I know from having worked with a lot of contractors that the client comes to you thinking that it's no big deal. They just say, oh, by the way, can you do this? Right. And then now you're charged with the responsibility of having to realize it right in the moment and say, well, guess what this is well beyond the scope of what we originally contracted for, so we need to create a change order for that. So you put the client on notice. Right. Yeah. Then I understand the frustration, though, because then it's like, okay, how do you get from that to actually producing a document timely so that you can start to work without delaying the whole thing? The project? only way that we've ever been able to get that to actually work is, is just a handwritten form, like, you know, a carbon form, mm -hmm. and you write it up right there, and you have the client sign it just normal. I mean, and then you can always scan it into your system or, and then enter it later. I mean, unfortunately, it does sound like duplication work, but that's the only way that we've ever been able to get it to be solved right then and there. And if my employees have to do a change order, they can at least do it because they are not technology savvy at all. It's usually a very difficult <coughs> situation. Mm -hmm. uh, something that was missed originally in the architectural uh, survey of a, of a project, let's say, and you run into let's say a wall up in the ceiling someplace that's that's blocking all the other trades that have to go through. It wasn't planned on and it requires extra work and it stops every everybody in the project. Mm -hmm. But now to get the coordinator in the field to sign is one thing. But then he said I have to pass it through my home office so their original architect is going to agree to it, you know. And meanwhile you've got hundreds of guys <laughs> Yeah, cool. sitting there waiting. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it's it, it is a challenge whether you're you're doing remodeling work like like um, Rhonda or say you're out doing building a bridge or building working out. on a road. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's there's always something that you know comes up that's like unexpected and and I was talking to a guy the other day or my husband was talking to somebody the other day about trying to like is there an app out there that that can handle CRM that can handle accounting that can handle estimating job costing and there isn't one specific application I we have both looked and there's always something that it's missing that's, and that's because you know, everybody tries to put contractors into one bucket and well, says, you, can't. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, every contractor needs this. Well, that's that's crud. Yeah, yeah. Because we're we do remodeling, so we yeah. do a lot of kitchen and bathrooms. But I, you know, my subcontractors may just do plumbing and electrical. So right. it's really different. I mean, we handle a lot more than just a standard individual sub does. Um, right, because you know. and and because of what you do, you act almost like a general contractor. We are a general. Yeah. Yeah. We are. You know, you're you're overseeing everybody, not right. only what you guys are responsible for, but what your subs are responsible for. Right. So getting for. a change order, you have to get a change order from the the subcontractor first, so we know what the price is, yep. and then we have to you know write it up and then get it to the client to sign. And by that time, it's like. You know, a week is, I mean, you just, it's, 
it's very difficult to do. There's, there so has at the end of the day, ultimately, it sounds like the solution is going to really have to be, you know, iPads in the field, mm -hmm. yeah. on the spot. So and that even that doesn't solve it completely, to be honest with you. Well, you still need time to think it through and make sure that you include everything and all the necessary charges. So the qu can you put a clause on the change order form that says, you know, in the interest of time, there may be additional changes that need to be added to this? You can put anything on you want. Yeah, they're not going to buy that. Well, yeah. it depends. I have some clients that, well, residential clients are a little easier to deal with. And Absolutely. Nancy, you deal with probably, you know, larger clients, you know, road construction, <coughs> things like that. They're definitely harder to deal with because they're involved in the state and stuff like that. But residential clients on my end um, are, are really understanding. Um, you know, unfortunately, the problem is, is that they're understanding, except I do have a client right now that would literally tell me if we didn't get a signed change order, oh, you didn't do that work. I'm not paying you. It, yeah. I mean, it, it, they're out there. Oh, yeah. So, right. Uh, By the way, Rhonda, Andrew posted a link uh, in the yeah, chat. Yeah, I saw that. I'm, you saw that? Yeah, thank you. Going to check it out. Thank you, Andrew. Um, it, it is tough, you know, and, and I, get, I get really disgusted with these people who try and tell me, oh, you know, Every contractor needs the same chart of accounts or the same item list. It's like, you know, what planet are you from? No, that's ridiculous. In fact, I just started writing something up talking about very specifically how you, your item list is going to be di very different for every contractor because everybody has a different way of looking at it. Some yeah. contractors want it broken down based on, I've had contractors I've worked with who wanted their item list structured around what part of the house they were working on. Yep. Right. Where others want it really broken down between here's all the labor, boom, 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 and here's all the materials, boom, boom, boom. And ultimately, I think every contract is trying to find their sweet spot in terms of how do I later look at this information for the purposes of coming up with more accurate estimates on future similar projects. That seems to be the goal in my experience with most contractors on the accounting side. And, 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 the, and the bigger guys, a lot of them who need like our AIA program, it, they have to use CSI cost codes. And what is, is that for those who are not in the know? It, construction, in, construction Specification Institute mm -hmm. is CSI, and it's it's a cost it, it's a cost code list. Um, hold on a second, I'll show you a sample. See, I was thinking of crimes and investigation. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not that good. Uh, the only thing I have to worry about is my workers' comp rates going up. <laughs> well, you've got our friend Tim on the, in the Facebook groups for that. Talk right. That's his whole area of expertise, actually. And boy, I'll Tim, tell you, he, Tim was, Brand? he was really no, good. No, not Tim Brand. Um, hangout that we did. What's that? Let's say Nancy has a hangout for that. Tim yeah. Blackwell. Is his name? He's in. The, he's got a post right now in the accountant's bookkeeper's business owner's Facebook group. You'll see him there. But he's the person to talk to about workman's comp for sure. He's that's his whole. That's all he does. It. I just want to ignore it. <laughs> Not a good idea. I'm kidding. I don't ignore it. Okay. Do you do you see my screen? I do. Master format numbers and titles. Yeah. This this was just updated April of this year, and is from the Construction Specifications Institute or con construction spe specifications in Canada. And hold on I'm glad I don't have to deal with all that. Okay. So and, Nancy, and do you <laughs> consult with companies? Let's say I'm a new contractor and I just don't even know what things I need to be aware of. Do you consult with companies to help them understand these things? I, I do a very limited amount of consulting. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it kind of, it, sometimes it's kind of catch as catch can because I never know from one day to the next what I'm doing. Gotcha. It, you know, and I, I mean obviously my, my, my first priority is providing support for our customers and at this point we've got like 5,000 companies in 50 states that Ben and I support. Wow. Okay, it, yeah, um, you know, I, I, I rue the day that, you know, it, it, and, and I've had this happen in the past where 
Intuit has put out an update that broke something in the SDK, even though it's not supposed to happen. It, it has a few times, and those days are just are, are horrible. I mean, we, we can't even breathe. Yes. So, you know, I, I, I have to be very, very careful. Um, but, I mean, this is... This is like your your CSI cost codes, and like <coughs> this 003100 is a main category, and these these are like subcategories. So all of these things would be set up in your QuickBooks item list, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I mean, y you can see it's it's pretty darn, you know, it's, it's pretty darn thorough. Detailed, yeah convoluted and you know then it gets down into mm -hmm. okay here here we got you know structure we got concrete mm -hmm. and we got structural concrete we got architectural concrete low density we got concrete finishing you know right. so I, I mean it's like it's like a, a subcontractor who just does concrete he would have a item list that would include some, but not all, of these concrete items because mm -hmm. he may not do them all. You know, it's interesting. I'm thinking there's a, and I don't know if something like this exists, but if I had, if I got my hands on this list, I'm thinking I could probably put that into a spreadsheet format and then create, and then create a series of IIF files such that people could import an item list for a new contractor based don't, on which things they don't need. Don't bother with it. I'm, I'm working on it. There you go. <laughs> hey, Seth. Yes, sir. Before we close up, and I typically wouldn't do something like this on a Hangout, but it's kind of for a good cause. Um, you saw my post last night about my personal issue I have going on, right? How yeah. Um, well, I'm trying to sell this iPhone to help with that. If anybody wants it, I would sell it to them. Okay, so if anybody's interested in an iPhone or if you know anybody who is... Get what network? Uh, it's on AT&T, but I can unlock it. So, <laughs> so it can go to Verizon? That, not so much, because Verizon doesn't take a j uh, chip. Oh. Well. I wish. Can't help you there, then. Okay, so speak to Andrew directly about the specifics, you know, if it's something you think you can use or if you know somebody who can use. Right. Okay. We do need to wrap up. It is coming up on 9 o'clock, but we have a couple people who have been here who haven't had a chance to say hello, like Adrian. How are you, Adrian? I'm fine. I got actually some time to come in uh, today, so... Well, the good uh, news is you're busy enough not to have the time to come in, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, sort of. Uh, unfortunately, I had one client didn't turn up today, so... Uh, but I, you still have nothing on the walls. Uh, only because it's behind me. I do on left <laughs> and right. But, um, and we covered uh, the Adrian speaks to us from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we've, uh, we've been putting a new, uh, a new... Finally, a new server system in. So now we are... Uh, we have all our QuickBooks data running on virtual servers, virtual machines. Nice. So all my, all, all my clients, uh, not all of them, but some of them uh, go into QuickBooks and they, they fire up a virtual machine, uh, which is basically like a, uh, a Windows 7 desktop. So I've got lots gotcha. of them. So we've, we've been busy working away on stuff like that. So that's where I've been for the last few weeks, really. Fantastic. So, Fantastic. But, but, but what it means now is that um, we can work with clients anywhere in the country. Very, That's very great. easily, all on our own system. That's great. So they just upload their QuickBooks file to you, and you've got it hosted, and they can access it, and you can access it. Uh, exactly. Just on the other side of this wall behind me uh, is the server. So um, that's it. They fire it up. I can actually... So you're providing it. your own hosted solution. In other uh, words. Uh, yeah, basically, exactly what it is. Um, I can access it. Uh, the, uh, the bookkeeper's accountants on our team can do it, and the client can access it. And they that's can amazing. upload upload their uh, source data quite easily. Just, you know. And now I know typical hosted solution for a client on the client side um, is what do you call it? Uh, is, is is like fifty dollars per month per user. So are you able to make it more affordable than that to your oh, clients, or way way cheaper, two hundred dollars a year. Period. Whoa. Period. <laughs> Bruce, are you thinking what I'm thinking? 
I am. Uh, I think you guys uh, need to talk to Adrian. That's amazing. It's. I mean, uh, in, term, in, in terms of putting it together, it's very easy. Um, you know, we, we run through something called VMware. Uh, and are you willing to offer this as a service just to somebody, even if they're not using your bookkeeping services, like, I say, I Rhonda? I, I never thought about it, but maybe. <laughs> you know, right now it's within our own client base, but um, right. certainly no reason we, we could extend it. That's, you could you could build a huge revenue stream for yourself right there, Adrian, because everybody else, standard, $50 per month per user. And the reason is because these hosting companies are also offering to host your whole IT solution. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't need that, nor do they want that. They just want to host QuickBooks. <laughs> and so if you can offer an affordable solution like that, you can make a ton of money, I would think. Yeah, but all, all, all I offer right now uh, for our clients is they have a QuickBooks icon, they fire up QuickBooks... 2012 Pro or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and they have a Windows desktop with uh, you know Microsoft Office on it. That's perfect, and I can access it. They can access it. Right, and so they can run it in multi-user mode right off of your server. They, yeah, if they if they need to, um, mm -hmm. and then you know we put on things like the uh, Join Me software from uh, Log Me In, so we can share screenshot uh, screen desktops and mice and all sorts of things. So I, I'm trying to make it as easy to use and as um, uh, as open as possible, you know, right. but within a secure environment. Gotcha. We can help you get an exterminator for those mice, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's what I've been busy doing. So uh, that's why I've been uh, quiet for a few weeks. Right. Okay, two things quickly on the feed for the uh, Hangout here. Uh, Joshua Blevins uh, writes, don't feel too bad, Adrian. I had a client stiff me today, too. Yep. And then Tina writes, <laughs> Adrian's contact site, please. So Tina wants to, uh, your web address. Oh, okay. So, uh, what is it, simplybookkeeping.com? Yeah, I'll just put it in now. There we go. All right, and I'll put it on the, uh, the live feed down there so that everybody else can see it. So that is it. And then we had Joanne join us for the first time, but it looks like she's uh, taking a break. <laughs> she must be in a union. <laughs> yeah. What, um, about, what about Cheryl? Cheryl? How are you? Hello? Hi, sorry, I had my microphone moved. That's okay. Can you hear me? I can. Hello? Yep. Hello? We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? I guess not. <laughs> I can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> you Everything's now? very delayed. Good. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> yep, I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. How are you? Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Good. How are you? Fantastic. Great. It okay. was good to join you guys again this week. Thank you very much. You. Great having you. I wish Joanne was back so we could say hello and goodbye. Um, oh, by the way, Nancy just posted right. in the chat. Nancy, post in the live feed too, please. Um, you know, on Google Plus. That, okay. Uh, uh, Nancy has a free trial, so if any of you have architect clients or contractor clients who need this, then definitely check that out. And Nancy's got some other products Bruce. too that she offers. So what? We What's wrong? We're taking a look at some of those. And I'm, I'm no. <laughs> okay. Bruce is getting excited over there. What, what's going on? Oh, he's hitting. Right. He's hitting his head. Oh, don't hit your head. Um, <laughs> now I lost my train of thought. I was going to say something. We have, oh, we have a guest coming up. I haven't actually scheduled it with him yet, but he's a guy I met from a networking group that I'm a part of here who has a really interesting product that can substantially automate the whole collections process and it integrates with QuickBooks such that it will analyze your receivables aging and then generate letters strictly based on the timing of the balances that are due. And it has all different stages so that initially it's coming really internally from you, but once it reaches a certain point and you can set up all the trigger points, it will start sending letters out from this national collection service on very official looking paper and he and the fees are a lot less than what you would pay a collection agency. Typical collection agency is like uh, 40, 50 percent they'll get from what they collect. These guys, it's much more like 5, 10 percent from what he showed me. So anyway, and he'll show us the QuickBooks integration. He'll do a screen share. So I thought that would be interesting for you guys to take a look at uh, in the next few weeks. Right. We'll bring him on. Cool. 
So, and then Nancy will have you uh, probably over time just show us all of your other products because I think it's interesting stuff and I think it hits an area that's really important that a lot of us tend to not think about because it's complicated. <laughs> oh, it is. It's a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. So, which makes it all that much more important. So, anybody else? Any parting words? Other than Father's have Day. a wonderful weekend and happy Father's Day mm -hmm. to all you dads out there. Happy Dad's Day. Uh, one quick question we have, by the way, Nancy, you might know this. Do you have to have the uh, license for the QuickBooks software to obtain the software developer kit? No, you just have to go onto their site and get it, right? It, correct. It, you, you can join IDN as a community level member, which is free. Um, IDN is the Intuit Developer Network. It, correct. And it's just it's developer.intuit.com. And you can, like I said, become a community member for free, download the SDK. Um, but the thing is, if you're going to write a program, you want to test it, so you do need QuickBooks. So you will want a license at some point. Got it. So it's developer.intuit.com. Yep. All right, then. Well, you all have a great week. We will see you hopefully on Monday with our next interview. We're going to be interviewing Kay Bell, who actually, uh, among other things, writes for Bankrate.com. So that should be exciting. Oh. Okay. Thanks, Seth. Thanks. All right. We'll see you all. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye.